Welcome again from West Craig Hill Drive. Last week I said I would try to put something together for Ash Wednesday. Well, today is Ash Wednesday, the first day in the season of Lent. Lent is a 40-day period before Easter. It begins on Ash Wednesday. We skip the Sundays when we count the 40 days because Sundays commemorate the Resurrection. So Lent begins on 17 February 2021 day and ends on 3 April 2021, which is the day before Easter. Lent is a season of soul searching and repentance. It is a season for reflection and taking stock. Now Lent originated in the very earliest days of the church as a preparatory time for Easter, when the faithful rededicated themselves and then when converts were instructed in the faith and prepared for baptism. By observing the 40 days of Lent, the individual Christian imitates Jesus' withdrawal into the wilderness for 40 days. All churches that have a continuous history extending before A.D. 1500 observe Lent. The ancient church that wrote, collected, canonized, and propagated the New Testament also observed Lent believing it to be a commandment from the Apostles. However, since the, since the Bible does not mention the observance of Ash Wednesday particularly, or Lent, our pilgrim separatist ancestors would probably not have celebrated Lent at all. If it was not specifically written in their Geneva Bibles, they would not have celebrated it. In fact, they did not celebrate Christmas or Easter. Thus, believers are free to decide whether or not to participate. Self-examination, moderation, giving up of sinful habits, and repentance from sin are all good practices for believers. So, Christians ought to do these things daily and not only during Lent. In many countries, the last day before Lent, called Mardi Gras, Shrove Tuesday, Carnival, or Fashing has become the last fling before the solemnity of Lent. For centuries, it was customary to fast by abstaining from meat during Lent, which is why some people call the festival Carnival, which is simply Latin for farewell to meat. Now, I was born in 1944. My parents were members of the Congregational Church long before 1957, when the Congregational Christian Churches and the Evangelical Reformed Church joined together to become the United Church of Christ, the denomination of which our church is a member. I was baptized in the Congregational Church, which was the church of my pilgrim separatist Plymouth ancestors who would not, as I said, have celebrated Lent, Christmas or Easter, because those were not written in the Geneva Bibles. Now, I remember each year as the season of Lent rolled around, many of my Roman Catholic friends would show up in school with a dark black smudge on their foreheads, and I wondered why that was the case, as well as wondering why I did not have any such smudge. Although our church celebrated Lent, we did not receive ashes, which as I found out later, is what created the smudge on my friends' foreheads. Ashes, you see, became a sign of remorse, repentance, and mourning. Today, someone might wear a black armband to signify that they are in mourning. Back in the early days of the Christian Church, people put ashes on their foreheads when in mourning. Biblical examples of that can be found in 2 Samuel 13 and Esther 4, where we read these words. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes, and went through the city wailing with a loud, bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed in with sackcloth. In every province, wherever the king command and his decree came, there was a great mourning amongst the Jews, with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and most of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. Other scriptural references are found in the book of Job and Jeremiah. During Lent, ancient Christians 
mourned their sins and repented of them. So it was appropriate for them to show their sincerity by having ashes on their foreheads. That custom has persisted in the church as secular society has changed around us. It is indeed most appropriate on Ash Wednesday when we begin a period of sober reflection, self-examination, and spiritual rededication. Traditionally, the ashes for the Ash Wednesday service come from the burning of the palm fronds from the previous year's Palm Sunday celebration. Now, some people only celebrate the happy times in Jesus' life. You know, Palm Sunday, Easter Sunday, and Christmas. But I think as true believers and faithful followers, we should also watch and pray with him on Monday, Thursday, stand by him at the cross on Good Friday, and retreat with him into the wilderness during Lent, beginning on Ash Wednesday evening. You can do that today at 4 o'clock at church, where Pastor Bradley will preside at a service for Ash Wednesday. So, let us close with this prayer. God of day and God of darkness, all our time belongs to you. Yet how often we fail to notice your nearness, feel your presence, and trust your guidance. We desire only good times, happy moments, and we miss your work in the shadows. We avoid conflict with others and fear looking deep within ourselves. Sometimes it feels we have no place left to run, no place left to hide. Loving God, hold us during these Lenten days so that we may look at ourselves, our relationships, our openness to you. In brightness or darkness, let us always know your healing, freeing, guiding presence. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, that concludes our Ash Wednesday meditation, but do think about attending church this afternoon and join us together in our Bible study group this evening as we continue studying the Gospel of Mark. So God bless you and have a wonderful day. We'll see you again next time.